Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1149. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great question here with one, two, three answers. Column A has product type, column B has product category, and column C has cost. And this person needs to calculate a helper column to look up based on a product type over to this table and get category. Then from this column, summarize the cost by category. Now, this person asks, is there a way to calculate the total cost without column B? Yes. And they said they don't want to simply hide column B, and it must be dynamic. Now, we can, we're going to look at the VLOOKUP and SUMIFS, because that's certainly a way. But then we're going to look at a, an amazing array formula and power pivot. See, because here's the deal. We have two tables, and there really should be a relationship between the two tables. So every time a transaction sees sunset, it also knows the category Aussie round. Whenever it sees a transaction wherever in this table for quad, it needs to see the category freestyle, because we want to be able to summarize by just our two categories, freestyle and Aussie round. Now the first thing is, if it's going to be dynamic, we're going to use tables, Control T, Enter. We could go up to Design and click up here to get our table name, or we could simply Alt J T A, and this one will be Products, Enter. Now before I even add my VLOOKUP, I'm going to come over here, Control T, Enter, Alt J T A, Costs. So now our tables are dynamic. This uh, formula will automatically expand as we add new transactions. Now later, I'm going to delete this to see that the array formula will work also. But let's go ahead and VLOOKUP. The lookup value is always going to be, oh, look, there's our table formula nomenclature. It means at this row, please get the product type, comma, table array. And watch this. This will be table formula nomenclature. Why are we using this crazy table formula nomenclature or structured references? Because it's all dynamic. If this table changes or this table changes, all dynamic, comma, two, because the second column has the category. And I'm not going to use the fourth argument, because this table is always sorted. We're using approximate match. That'll work even when you have text, but it's got to be always sorted. I'll see round. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now we can come over here, equals some ifs, and the sum range. Control Shift down, or oh, look at that. It's putting our table formula nomenclature in, comma, criteria range, Control Shift down arrow, comma, the criteria is one cell to the left. We can see our formula, close parentheses, Control Enter, and copy it down. So those are the correct numbers. Now, let's check this out. What in the world are we going to do? We need to simulate this whole column in our array formula. So anytime you have a helper column, most of the times, if you need a single cell solution, you can do it. But, but this is going to be tricky. Now what we'd really like to do is use VLOOKUP. Because most of the time when you're doing array form is you look at the, the formula in the actual helper column. And usually you can fix it by making some array operation and then simulate the whole column over here. But check this out. The arguments inside a VLOOKUP are not very polite. The only one that can do a function argument array operation is column index number. And the one we really need is lookup value. So VLOOKUP won't work here. Now, this, t this column is going to have to be sorted. But we can simulate this whole column over here using lookup. Now, lookup is similar to VLOOKUP. It actually came before VLOOKUP. It only does approximate match. And we're going to use this lookup value array. And the reason we're going to use lookup value array, the second screen tip here, is because that lookup value can do a function argument array operation. So we can highlight all of the lookup values, give it our table, and it will simulate this column. But again, it has to be first column sorted. Lookup value, I'm highlighting all of these. Instead of normally putting a single value in lookup, which then returns a single item, we're giving it a bunch, so it'll return a bunch of items, comma. Now the array, the way this works in lookup, it's different than VLOOKUP. As long as there are the same number of 
rows and columns, or there's more rows than there are columns, which it is here, it'll do VLOOKUP. If there's more rows than columns, it does HLOOKUP. And guess what? We don't have to put comma 2, because it'll always take from the last column. That's it. Close parentheses. Now let's highlight this and F9 to evaluate it. And sure enough, if you check item by item, it's exactly the same as here. Now we have an array of items. We can ask the question, are any of you equal to freestyle? When we highlight this in F9, now we get trues and falses. Exactly the same column length, but trues and falses that allow us to pick out our cost. Control Z. I'm going to put this in some product. Some product will not understand trues and falses. So we're going to wrap a par two parentheses and a double negative. F9, that will convert to ones and zeros. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this inside of some product. Why some product? Because we can do array operations in these arguments without having to use any special keystroke. What I want is I want to take the column for cost and multiply it by my series of ones and zeros. Some product will multiply and then add. Copy it down. That is amazing. Check that out. Now let's test both of them. Let's come to the bottom. Tab adds a new record. Sunset tab tab. And this is not a lookup situation. These numbers are actually different. We could have done a different formula, but these are always based on some different discount. So I'm going to hit 12. Before I even hit Enter, Sunset is under Aussie Round. So this number right here will change. And instantly it does. So that's the dynamic part. Now let's right click column B, Delete. And just like that, that's not going to work. But that will work without that helper column. I'm going to Control Z and leave it there just for a trail of what we did. Now, our third example is going to involve Power Pivot, but in an indirect way. Now, this is only going to work in Excel 2013. Notice, we in essence had two tables, and we needed to create a relationship. Here we did it with helper column. Here we did it with an array formula. But I don't want to mess around with any of that. I just want to connect these two tables. So when I build a pivot table, I can use this field from this table and automatically use this field from a second table. All right, now we're going to go over to the sheet, Power Pivot Tables. And we're, again, it's not Power Pivot proper. Even though I have Power Pivot installed, I'm going to show you how to do it if it's not installed. Now, each one of these have to be tables. And I have Control T and name the tables. I'm going to click in the first table and just insert a regular pivot table. Insert pivot table or use Alt N V. And the trick for us is I'm going to say add this to data model. Now this data model, this is inside of Power Pivot. But if you check this in the Create Pivot Table dialog box, you do not have to have Power Pivot. It will just add it behind the scenes to what is called the X Velocity Analytics Engine or the Columnar Database. Data model, columnar database, and X Velocity Analytics Engine are all synonyms for the same thing. Actually, this data model is in all Excel 2013. You just don't have the Power Pivot ribbon and the ability to do some of the advanced things unless you have the right version. Now we want to put this table on this existing sheet so we can see that it's dynamic. I'm going to click an H1 and click OK. Now, because we click the data model, it does see our table table, right? our Excel table. Notice the black line, but I don't see the second table. No problem. We're coming over to all. These are all the tables in this workbook. The one we want is this one. Now, I'm going to make a mistake here, but check that out. We'll come back and fix it in just a second. You already can tell it's not in the data model because it doesn't have a black line on the top. That one is in the data model, but let's just try it. I'm going to click and drag P product category down to rows. Already it looks like we have the ability to drag a field or condition or criteria from one table and then go to a second table and drag costs. Now instantly we're going to get the wrong answer. That's the total total. That's because we do not have a relationship between the first column of our lookup table and the product type column in our cost table. 
No problem. Check this out. We can click this yellow Create Relationship button. And instantly, this dialog box comes up. The trick is the second table is always going to be your lookup table. Now, for those of us who do Excel, we know that the first column of our lookup table has to have no duplicates. In essence, each unique item in the first column is the unique identifier for this record. So we can look up Sunset and go get Aussie Round. Well, in databasing, they have a special name for the first column where there's a unique identifier. It's called primary key. So that's what I always use to remind myself. Primary key, that's my prompt. Remember, that's the lookup table. So I'm going to select Related Table, D Products, and we want our product type. Then for the top table, it's our cost. Now, F cost was the name I gave that. And notice it pops right up because it has the same name. As soon as we click OK, we have created a relationship just as we would have with a column here with VLOOKUP looking up each one of these to grab from the second column our freestyle. Now our pivot table works. Now, let's go ahead and try dynamic. Last cell in the last record in the table tab, I can type sunset. And I'm going to add 12 bucks, just like we did for our formula example. And sure enough, it doesn't update. Oh, man, no problem. You know, this was pretty easy. A couple clicks with pivot tables, right? Drag and drop. But you got to remember, when the source data changes, you have to refresh the pivot table. So I'm going to right click Refresh. And instantly, we get our new totals. Now, if you don't mind doing refresh in a pivot table, that's pretty amazing. We can do, in essence, a VLOOKUP without VLOOKUP by having a relationship between two tables, only in 2013. Any other version, we can do any of these formulas. No problem. A lot of times, VLOOKUP and some ifs is exactly what you want. In this case, this person could not have this column. So there's an array formula that will work awesomely. So VLOOKUP, some ifs, some product lookup, or data model and relationships, three different methods. We'll see you next trick.